officially, I never finished high school in the formal sense until later years. In fact, I taught two generations before I took time out to get my BA, my master's, and my PhD. And I have it all now, but uh, I'm principally self-trained. My university was the public library and well-chosen second-hand bookstores. So while I grew up poor, I grew up in a very rich environment, culturally rich. I grew up with a whole lot of love and affection, a lot of lap time, a lot of slap time, too, because I wasn't permitted to get away with too much. I to see Arthur Schumburg. And she said very sharply, you know, impatiently, because she was short of help, you just have to walk up three flights. I walked up three flights, and there Arthur Schumburg was holding down the desk, being 18 and rash. I wanted to know the history of the African people of the world. Henceforth, right now, within the hour, his lunch hour, all of it. He said, sit down, son. <laughs> what you are calling African history and Negro history are the missing pages of world history. Then he said, son, go study the history of your masters. Go study the history of the people who enslaved you and find out why they found it a necessity to remove an entire people from the respectful commentary of the history of the world. Well, my earliest impressions of them was a people in power who intended to stay in power. And I began to wonder why they had so much and other people had so little, and why everybody I knew worked harder than they. Who made this arrangement? I studied European history and world history. Now, when I went back to Schomburg with some knowledge of background of European history, now he began to show me how to study African history. Arthur Schomburg taught me the interrelationship of African history to world history. Willis and Huggins of the old Harlem History Club taught me the political meaning of history. And from the lectures of William Leo Hansberry of Howard University, I learned the philosophical meaning of history. The most valuable lesson I would learn is that when you address a people by their right name, that name must relate to land, history, and culture. All people go back to the geography of their original origin and identify themselves, no matter where they live on the face of the Roman earth. Taxation. Roman oppression would cause people to turn to new gods and question old gods, to turn to a story about a god who comes forth to rescue them. Now, they would draw from African folklore the story of the child in the manger. Now, what am I saying? Later, in retrospect, he was referred to as Jesus Christ. Now, you can argue about the coloration of Christ if you want to, but I can sell that very quick, and we can go on to the next subject. Was he a Roman? The answer is no. Was he a Greek? The answer is still no. These were the only European types in that part of the world at the time. If he was neither Roman or Greek, he was one of those other people, and all of those other people were non-European and non-white. <laughs> and he came from the other people.